Hey, I'm Elise and this is The Crunchy Ginger. Today I'm going to show you something I'm really excited about, which is how to water bath can. And this is for complete beginners, like you've never done this before, it's a little intimidating, but I'm going to walk you through it step by step. If I can do this, you can totally do this. We're going to start with a really easy recipe for pepper relish. These are spicy peppers and hot peppers. I've got mine all kind of mixed together. This is a recipe that I've adapted slightly from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. This is like the canning Bible. So if you're interested at all in canning, I would check this book out. You can check it out at the library if you're not ready to commit to buying it. But honestly, I use it all the time. It's got beautiful pictures and really helpful information for beginners and people who have been doing this for a while. So I want to start first. Um, Let's just dive right in because there's a lot to cover, but I want to start first with talking about what you're going to need for canning. It's really just one step beyond cooking, so if you can cook, you can absolutely follow the directions to do this at home. You're going to need a water bath canner, which is basically a really big pot. This is a water bath canner. As you can see, it's an absolutely enormous pot. If you don't have a water bath canner, you can use a very large pot, provided that you can fit your jars into the bottom of it without them touching and that you can fill it up beyond the jars um, probably about three inches, you want about three inches of room above your jars to the top because you're going to want to fill some water above where the jars are. So if you've got a big pot like that, you can absolutely use that. The second thing you're going to need is canning jars. These are half pint jars and I really like these for things like jams and jellies and relishes and salsas, anything that um, you're gonna use as like condiment, that way you don't have too much of it when you take it out of your, um, out of your pantry. Also, these make really nice gifts and they come, you can buy them in these sort of pretty quilted jars like this. Um, when you buy them new, they're going to come with new lids and bands. If these are jars that you have are even using for another purpose or you've inherited from somebody um, you're just gonna need to buy new lids and you can buy the new lids um, in a box like this you can get them at you know Walmart or Target or your grocery store or Amazon wherever they come in these little 12 packs um, make sure that you're buying the correct size lid for your jars these are regular mouth jars there's also wide mouth jars so just make sure you're getting the right size um, and these will just run you a couple of bucks. So the great thing is once you've made the inv investment to buy the jars themselves, they're incredibly hardy. Ours have been dropped a number of times. Um, these are all jars that have been reused before, so you'll see that some of them look a little bit different than others because they were from different packages. You'll just want to um, inspect them, give them a once over, make sure that there's no cracks around the edge of the rim or the bottom. Um, we use ours for like drinking glasses and stuff too. It's the perfect vessel for a wine. Um, so if you um, just make sure that you um, don't have any cracks in them, the saddest thing would be to pack your food in there and realize that your jar is going to break under the heat. Um, a few other things that are nice to have but not, necess not completely necessary. You're going to need some kind of tongs to lift the jars out of the, out of the hot water bath canner. These, this stuff all comes in like a little canning kit you can buy and I would say that if you're interested in this it's well worth it. The kit's going to probably run you about 10 bucks from any retailer and it comes with a lot of little handy stuff. Um, you don't have to have it. There are other ways around it and I'll show you a couple of little, of little tricks for not having this. I didn't have it for a while. So that's what you need to get started. Um, I like to start with this for beginning canners because unlike something like a, a jam or a jelly where you have to actually make a jam, and for me that was what I started with and like I thought, oh everybody starts with jamming, this will be, we can figure this out. But like there's a little bit of a learning curve to actually making jam. So I, I find this to be a perfect beginner recipe because you don't actually have to do much cooking in this. We're gonna chop up these peppers. I'm going to wear gloves because I have really sensitive ginger skin and any kind of pepper juice really will just tear my hands apart. So I would suggest using, using um, gloves to cut up your hot peppers. You need a couple of cloves of garlic, some regular plain white vinegar, and water. 
That's the only ingredients in this recipe. So it's really easy. All we're doing is chopping and boiling some brine, and I'll show you how to do that. In this recipe, um, you have a little bit of wiggle room. If you like super spicy relish, you can use all hot peppers. Uh, I like to do some sweet, some spicy, because it kind of cuts out the heat. Um, I like mine a little more mild. If you don't want that, if you want it really hot, you can use all spicy hot peppers, and that will be great too. This ratio, just for reference, is probably about a third sweet peppers to two thirds spicy peppers. Um, for the batch that we're going to make, this is about four pounds of peppers. So you're gonna need about three or four pounds of peppers to do a good full size batch. So before I get started with my recipe, I am going to get this water bath canner going. So let me show you what I mean. When you've got your large pot of your water bath canner, you're gonna to wanna to have this rack down in the bottom. Uh, when you buy a canner, it comes with a rack like this. This just keeps the jars, the glass jars, from touching the bottom of your pot. If you are using a pot that doesn't have a rack, you can kind of make your own by using some extra jar bands like this and kind of layering them in the bottom to create um, like a rack that the jars can sit on. That will work. Um, I have done that before. It's a little bit of a juggling act trying to get them in there to lay exactly right, but it will work. Um, you're gonna wanna fill this with water. Water bath canning is canning in a giant bucket of water. So I'm going to use my jars. Go ahead and put them in the pot. And these jars um, are clean. You wanna make sure that you wash your jars. There's no soap in them. I kind of like to do it like this so that the jars don't fall over. But you'll wanna fill up the jar with water all the way about an, uh, an inch or two above the jars. So it's quite a bit of water. So that's why we're going to start it now because it'll take a while for this to heat up and to come to a boil. And then we'll put it on the, on the stove on sort of a medium high heat to get it going while we chop up all of our vegetables. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this brine simmering, and this is a super easy um, brine. It calls for three cloves of garlic. So we'll just go ahead, um, and you just wanna smash them a little bit. You don't have to do anything, um, anything fancy with these. You don't need to chop them up or anything. I'm just gonna peel them. Um, helpful tip for garlic, use the heel of your hand and kind of smash the, the skins off of them. Nope. Peel right off. So we're going to throw three cloves of garlic. And this recipe is going to call for two cups of water and six cups of white vinegar. When you are doing a canning recipe, it is incredibly important that you do not mess around with the ratios of things in the recipe that could affect um, the food safety. So in this case, we're talking about the acidity. Um, you don't want to swap out, you don't want to uh, do less vinegar than it calls for because that's going to be the food safety issue here. When you choose a canning recipe, please always make sure that you're using one from a trusted source. All of these ball recipes um, are going to be tested and tried and true and they are going to have the correct, maintain the correct acidity to keep you from poisoning your family. So there's two cups of that, four cups of this, and one more, six. You're gonna to wanna to put all of this in a stainless steel um, saucepan or pot. Two cups of water. And we're gonna bring this to a boil. Um, it only needs to boil for about five minutes. It's probably gonna take me longer than five minutes to cut up all these peppers, but I just wanna have this ready to go so that when the peppers are ready, we can just put it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the, on the eye on about medium high heat or so and let it get going. You will know when it's going because if you've never boiled vinegar before, it will singe off your nose hairs. So you know it's working when it's burning your nose. Now I'm gonna get started um, with chopping these peppers. I'm gonna put on these gloves. 
Um, I like to use a, an, a, an assortment of colors of peppers, mostly because I think it looks pretty. Um, there is some nutritional benefit to having different colored peppers. Fun fact, jalapenos and lots of other peppers turn red when they fully ripen. So the difference between green jalapenos and red jalapenos is actually how long they've been on the vine. Um, red jalapenos are going to be slightly less spicy than green jalapenos. Um, red jalapenos also contain about 11 times more beta carotene than green jalapenos or green peppers. Same thing with um, the same thing is true for red and green bell peppers. Um, but in, either way, all peppers contain a good amount of vitamin C, vitamin A, um, fiber, lots of good stuff in peppers. So they're well worth preserving for us to use all year round. I'm going to get started on this, and I will show you how to put it all together in just a few minutes. Seeding the peppers. Can I see? Oh. Okay, we are ready to go. So, if you have, uh, if you have boiled your brine uh, and it took you longer to do your peppers than your brine, just turn it down to a simmer while you are um, finishing chopping to keep it warm. Also, you don't want your, your jars to start boiling, so if that starts to get really hot, you can turn the water down, because it took me a few minutes to chop all these peppers, but look at that! Isn't it gorgeous? I love the different colors. It's so pretty. It looks like confetti, and I chopped mine by hand. It is more labor intensive, but you know what? I prefer a thicker chop, like a dice like this. If you put it in the food processor, it's gonna be really finely diced, really um, almost liquidy. So I prefer it like this. You can do it the other way, but I think this makes for a better relish. So the next step is to put the food in the jars. So very carefully, this is gonna be super hot. You've been heating this up. Whew. With the lid on, whoa, sorry. I'm gonna use my tongs to take a jar out. So, when I, I like to pull it out with the water in the jar and kind of pour the water out over here. You don't want to shock the jars going from, from hot to room temperature too fast. So I'm going to do, let's do this one jar at a time right now. You're going to want to take out one or two at a time, but let's just start with one so I can really show you the process. I'm going to use a funnel like this that we got with our canning kit. And you're gonna fill this jar with your pepper mix. Make sure you've really stirred this up to mix up your hot and your spices. Get all your colors mixed together. And you're gonna to wanna to kinda of pack them in there. You wanna pack them to what they call a generous half inch head space. And headspace just means how far your food is from the top of the jar. My assistant is here, if you can hear him. Um, so this is a headspace checker. It's got like a little step stool deal, and it has markings on it for um, a half an inch, which here is that one right there. And I'm going to use this to see, yep, I'm, it's about, the food is about a half an inch from the top of this jar. If you don't have one of these kinds of tools, we used to use this chopstick, and we, um, my husband, measured a half an inch from the end of the chopstick and made a tick mark, also a quarter inch, because some recipes are a quarter inch, and we used that. That will totally work. We used this for years. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is use your ladle and ladle your hot liquid, your hot brine, into this jar to fill it up. spoonfuls here. Okay. Right there. I'm going to use my, you can use either your headspace checker or your chopstick. I actually prefer the chopstick for this. To slip it between the food and the side of the jar to release any bubbles. 
So this will help the, the peppers, <clears throat> ooh, they're like, the peppers are like getting to my throat. They're so spicy. This will re remove any bubbles and help the food settle. And then we will kind of um, check our head space again. Yep, and we are still about a half an inch from the top. So I'm going to use a, a clean rag. I've just wet it with a little bit of water. This jar is hot, by the way, so I wouldn't grab onto it. You can use a, a mitt or one of these veals that comes with your canning kit. What we're doing is making sure that there is no food, no pepper pieces or anything on the outside rim of this jar. You need the jar rim to be clean so that the seal forms properly. Bring our lid. Set him directly on top of our jar, one of our clean bands, and tighten him down. This is what they call fingertip tight. So it's not like crazy, you don't want this to spill. This is like just, just with your fingertips, not like cranking it on there like you can't open the pickle jar. Then we're going to take this guy, pick him up, straight up. He is ready to go back in the water bath. So we'll take him over, set him down on our rack. Woo. Making sure that it doesn't tip over, because that's no good. And I'm going to pick up another jar out of here. Pour out my water. We're going to repeat the process until all of our jars are filled with all of our peppers. So, we are locked and loaded with our jars. I ended up having a few more jars than I had planned for, which is no big deal because this recipe makes a really generous amount of brine. So it was no big deal to just grab a couple extra jars, warm them up for a minute, fill them up and stick them in. Now we are going to turn the heat up on this, bring it to a boil, We'll leave the lid on to help the heat get up, but once it, once it comes to a rolling boil, you're going to want to start your timer. You're going to want to start your timer for 10 minutes. That's the process time for this recipe. So the process time means how long the food scientists have determined that it's going to take to kill all of the bacteria uh, and the icky stuff in the food, get all the air bubbles out, and get it ready to sit on our shelf. So 10 minutes. Once, this, once it starts boiling. All right, 10 minutes is up, so we will cut the heat. This is really hot, so make sure that when you open it, you open it away from your face. Whew, okay, it's got a pretty serious boil still going. So what we're gonna do now is set another timer for five minutes. And after that timer, we'll take them out, take the jars out. Um, you need to let this water chill out a little bit so that when you pull the jar out of here after being in a rolling boil like that, the temperature shock doesn't totally shatter your jar. So I'm going to set a timer for another five minutes. One more note about processing time. Um, if you live above 1,000 feet, above, uh, above 1,000 feet above sea level, Check a chart, check an altitude chart. I'll put a link in the description for an altitude chart, um, but the 10 minute processing time is gonna be for 1,000 feet and under. You're gonna need to increase your time a little bit if you live in high elevation. So in five minutes, I'll show you how to take these guys out of here, and we're almost done. Okay, so the timer went off, and we are all done. The last thing is to take these jars out of this canner. So when you take them out, you want to use your tongs, Lift straight up. The wax that's sealing our lids, which is hopefully sealing our lids, is soft. So we don't want to tilt this and we don't want to bump into them. Go ahead and have a place set for them. I like to set them on a, a dish towel, like at the back of my counter, because we're going to need to let these cool for about 24 hours. So put them there, leave them, don't touch them. When you take them out of here, they are going to have a little bit of water on top of the jar, it's fine. Don't worry about it, just leave it on there, it will evaporate. Hopefully, if we have done our job, we will start to hear the seals on the lids of these jars popping, and it's my favorite sound. 
It, it's so satisfying. It makes me feel like all of that hard work um, has totally paid off. We've done it correctly, and the, jar, the jars are self-sealing. Whoa, I've got one that wants to tip over in here, so I'm going to, like, really carefully. Okay. I just like to put a towel underneath it like this so that I don't drip hot water all over my feet. Or if you have little people in your kitchen so you don't drip hot water all over your children. But this is great. So you will know that the jars are sealed because the lids will be down tight. So we can check them tomorrow. I will show you how to check a jar lid on one that I have already canned because these obviously, oh, did you hear it? Did you hear the noise? One of them popped. So good. Once you've let these cool on the counter for 20, uh, 24 hours, the best way to check is to hold it by the lid like this without the band on. A properly sealed jar will be able, will, will not come loose. You're gonna have to open this up with a, with a can opener or something. If for some reason your jars don't seal, the food inside is still safe. It's just not safe to store in your pantry. So put that one in the fridge and eat that one first. It's not a big deal. It happens to everybody. Little things can... Did you hear it? <laughs> little things can happen like a, you know, maybe a, we didn't get a little piece of food that was stuck between the, the top of the jar and the, and the lid. It just happens. It's a mystery. But most of the time they still look great. Now, let's talk about why this is frugal. If you have your own garden, you probably didn't pay anything for your peppers. I had to buy my peppers, because we live in a tiny apartment and don't have garden, and don't have any space to grow anything, but even still, I spent $10 at the farmer's market, and like maybe a dollar worth of vinegar was in here, and a couple of cloves of garlic. So all in all, I ended up with four, Excuse me. Mommy? Yes. Um, I flipped on the couch. You flipped on the couch. That doesn't sound like something you're supposed to do. Can you, can you be quiet for one second? This is my last jar. Let's see if we can hear any of the jars popping. I was just telling everybody that we spent less than $10 and we got four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11 jars of pepper to last us the rest of the year. Really the hard part about this is chopping all of the peppers. You can totally do this. I hope this has inspired you to want to start your own canning journey. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Send me a message. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to learn more frugal ways that you can help your family be a little cleaner and save a little money.